A European EV startup has validated its range test of its slick looking solar electric vehicle with over 400 miles on one charge of electric and solar energy. Forbes contributor Tom Malogny will be here to shine some light on the story and in other electric car news, Tesla's hefty price increase. Jeep fools us into thinking they're going electric, Neo wants everyone in the world to swap their batteries, and a piece of Electrify America is up for sale. All of this is coming up next. The Range Wars are heading up. This year, Lucid Motors is supposedly due to take the longest range title away from Tesla after the Model S Plaid Plus version was cancelled, but this week, a little-known EV startup Lightyear has thrown its hat into the ring as it has completed a successful prototype test of its Lightyear 1 EV scheduled to go in production in less than a year. The test was conducted at my grandmother's favorite speed of 53 miles an hour at the testing grounds in Germany. The Lightyear 1 got to 411 miles until it ran out of charge, which took about 10 hours. I'm assuming 13 if you count at the time waiting on hold for the AAA truck. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're the luckiest person alive. This does show that it is very possible that their goal of the 440 mile range can be achieved even by the EPA standards. And guess what? It was done with just a 60 kilowatt hour battery. How is it possible? I will let their CEO Lex Hofslut explain. Tell me a little bit about the efficiency, you know, having it light, having it not spend as much energy. What, what is the technology that you guys developed for that specific purpose? Yeah, the most important part is are the motors that are in the wheels. So we have um, four in-wheel motors uh, and they are direct drive. So you don't have any gears anymore. So that means no heat loss. But also because of the in-wheel motors, we can improve the, the architecture of the car and therefore improve the aerodynamics underneath the vehicle uh, and also in the back of the vehicle. Um, and if you start doing that, so suppose you have uh, higher efficiency motors, you have better aerodynamics, then you need a smaller battery to go to the same different distance. And if you have a smaller battery, then uh, the car is lighter. And if you have a lighter car, then it's less energy consumption. So there's a, there's a lot of kind of parts to it. And if you tune those parameters well, then you can really get uh, uh, a lot of reduction in energy need. But the powertrain efficiency is not all. This EV can get up to 45 additional miles from the higher power, uh, not from Jesus, from, from the sun. Jesus doesn't have time for your fancy electric car. That means that with up to 45 daily miles from the sun, your light year one may not even need to be plugged in like ever, especially for those daily drivers in big cities like New York and San Francisco. In this test, the car got only about 25 miles from the solar energy since Germany is not California even in July, but still very impressive. And this is not the only solar powered EV that is coming to the market soon. The California based Aptera, backed by our monthly guest Sandy Monroe, can get up to 40 miles through its solar panels on a good day as well. Now, Lightyear has a very interesting history. It literally started as a college science project, kind of like Facebook, without, you know, a blunt violation of your privacy or the endless pictures of your friend Sushi. Lightyear prototypes have taken many different odd shapes over the years until they have morphed into this beauty. You have probably noticed that even though this car is supposed to go in production in the first half of the next year, I haven't mentioned their factory. Well, in my defense, they don't have one. That's right, the company is planning on making 946 of these beauties in partnership with a third-party manufacturer, which they have yet to name. So why such odd number 946? Well, that's a little puzzle for you, and if you figure it out, put it in the comment section of this video. I'll give you two hints. One, it's right there in the name, and two, don't forget, in Europe, they measure distance in kilometers. And this beauty is not going to be cheap either at around 180,000 American dollars, but it shouldn't have a problem selling out with such an exclusive run. For more, we turn to the Forbes contributor and the host of his own YouTube channel, State of Charge, Tom Malogny, a much more exclusive run of just one Tom Malogny's ever made, and we are happy to have him here. But before that, 
Of course, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by the Volkswagen ID4, which I am now a proud owner of. One of my favorite features is the enhanced voice command system. I can do a lot of things in my car using my voice, including opening the shade of the beautiful panoramic optional roof without taking my hands off the wheel. See if you will love the ID4 as much as I do by exploring the link in the description of this video. All right, Tom, so let's talk about the Lightyear One here because they don't have a factory, but they're saying they're going in production by the end of the year. Now we have seen this before, right? In Neo is probably one of the best examples. They've been pretty successful running a car company. Uh, without having a factory. Fisker is doing the same thing with Magna and of course like even companies like Jaguar outsource their production to companies like Magna. Um, is it possible nowadays where you can just run a car company out of your living room and never have a factory? Absolutely. It's more than possible. It makes a lot of sense for a small startup like Lightyear, Alex. They don't have the funding, the financing to build out a factory that it'd be the most foolish thing in the world for them to do. Use a contract manufacturer, somebody that's good at building cars, and at least that's a great way to get their first vehicle off the ground. If it's successful, who knows what comes next? Yeah, there is no production hell that way. Now, let's talk about the fact that these guys have achieved some pretty good advances. Uh, it looks like, you know, with, with efficiency and many other things and solar technology, I'm a little bit, you know, I come from so from the software industry. When whenever there's a company that's that's a big company that's that's just not able to get there, not not able to 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 create the cutting edge technology, no problem. There's a you know startup in Palo Alto we can buy it for twenty thirty million dollars and boom we got the technology. As a matter of fact, the YouTube that platform that we're on right now. You know, the way the way we got here is because Google couldn't figure out how to do video and so they bought YouTube. And now it's Google's YouTube, the number one video platform on the internet. Why isn't the same thing happening in the auto industry? Why isn't Hondas and Subarus and, and other big manufacturers that are very much behind on, a, on, on the electric technology are buying companies like Lightyear One? Yeah, we don't see that happening. We do see partnerships like Honda just partnered with GM for their Ultium battery technology. So we're seeing partnerships, but we're not seeing what you're talking about an established OEM buying up a little startup. I don't have the exact answer for that, but my, if I were to guess, it would be that they don't believe the startups have anything that they can't do. Uh, you know, a company like Subaru or Honda might look at the light year one and say, hey, you know, if we wanted to have built that, we could have built that a few years ago. We have the resources, we have the people. Um, so I, I think that's part of the reason. They don't believe they need help. Man, this is the worst answer that, that, that I could expect on this, that, that they could do it, but they don't want to. All right, now let's talk about the technology that's obviously very unique to Lightyear One. I know Optera has been doing it as well, you know, putting solar panels on the car and adding range to it. Now, obviously, uh, originally the, the, the issue was that, you know, they're pretty heavy. They're taking more range out that they're bringing in. But, you know, now they figured out how to actually add, you know, good range to a car, which essentially you may never have to charge if you live in a big city, only drive 20 miles a day. Is this a technology that's here to stay or maybe it's completely impossible in cities like Seattle where it's always raining? So I think, yeah, I think it's here to stay, but I think it's going to go at a slow pace because we're still not yet at the point where the cost to um, develop and implement and, and, you know, put these panels on the cars is, is recoverable by the energy they produce. You take a look at the light year one, um, it can produce at under perfect conditions, enough energy to make the car go, I think it was 45 or 50 miles a day, something like that. That's like uh, 80 cents worth of electricity where I live. So, and that's in perfect conditions. So, you know, you're never gonna get the money back that it took to put that on the car. But solar panels are getting more and more efficient all the time. And I think, you know, some at some point, maybe four or five, six years down the road, it might be possible to put a system on a vehicle where it actually makes financial sense. And it's not more of a gimmick than anything. And, uh, you know, we're going to get there, but we're not there yet.
If you haven't had enough of Tom, which I never do, and that's why I subscribe to his YouTube channel, State of Charge, and I put a link to it in the description of this video. Let's move on to our next story, and we have another Tesla price change. If you are keeping track, which is getting harder and harder, but the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y prices have changed several times this year, mainly going up by about $500 each time. This time it is the refreshed Model S and X base models and both are going up in price by $5,000 and that's a lot. If you speak Tesla, that's like 50 Cybertruck reservations. This marks the one month anniversary of the Model S Plaid version going up by $10,000 before the start of the deliveries, but the price of the Model X Plaid stayed the same. But here's the weird thing, and by weird I mean totally normal for Tesla. The Model X starts at the higher price than the Model S, but its higher priced Model X Plaid version is cheaper than the Model S Plaid version. So why another price increase? Higher demand, lower parts supply, broken calculators, I honestly don't know at this point. If you do or have an educated guess, by all means put it in the comment section of this video. Jeep has some electric news for us. Something I don't say very often, by the way, its parent company Stellantis had an EV day with Jeep having its own EV day hosted by their CEO, where he has unveiled the new 2012 Grand Cherokee 4xE e-plug-in hybrid. I'm sorry, did I, did I say 2012? It says right there, 2022. I just assumed that anybody who wanted to unveil a plug-in hybrid did so, you know, in 2012. Jeep also announced that it plans to install solar-powered charging stations at famous off-roading trails in the US. Jeep also teased all electric models in every single SUV segment by 2025, including the self-driving technology. Now, I didn't think I was going to be impressed by any new ideas from Jeep, but stargazing in a self-driving vehicle does look very cool. Now, all I need is a cute girlfriend to go with me in an all-electric Jeep. I, I don't know which one is harder to get. NIO had its own annual power day. I, I'm assuming they got that idea from Jeep and they have announced their plans to add at least 3,700 battery swap stations worldwide in the next few years now that NIO is expanding outside of China, starting with Norway first. That's in addition to its regular fast charger network. As you probably know, I love the concept of a battery swap as the ultimate solution to long recharge wait times and the independence of the battery size or the price of the battery from the actual vehicle. At this point, NIO has installed around 300 battery swap stations with over half a million successful battery swaps in China to support their fleet of 120,000 electric cars it has sold so far. According to Reuters, Volkswagen is looking to sell a part of their stake in Electrify America charging network. So if you're interested, you better start borrowing some money from your mom because they're selling $1 billion worth. Electrify America is owned by the Volkswagen Group of America, but it operates as an independent entity. It has become the largest third-party fast charging network in the United States with over 600 locations in operation now, targeting 800 by the end of the year. And yet most Tesla drivers have no idea it even exists. There is no joke here, it is just a sad but accurate fact. Now, it would make sense if other automakers invest into the Electrify America, like the Ionity in Europe, which is a similar fast charging network over there that's owned by several major automakers like Volkswagen, but also BMW and Ford, with Hyundai jumping in more recently. This is one of those deals which I think can be beneficial to all electric car drivers if done right. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and if you want to join as a premium member, you will have access to all kinds of exclusive material. All you have to do is click on that join button and boom, you are in. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time and remember to stay charged.